I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. The road to the resignation of President Richard Nixon began on June 17, 1972, the day burglars hired by Nixon's aides broke into Democratic Party headquarters at the Watergate complex to install illegal wiretapping devices. A day after five men were arrested at the Democratic National Committee's headquarters, White House Press Secretary Ron Ziegler famously called the Watergate break-in a third-rate burglary. But the Washington Post reporters working hard in their office and outside in the field were not so sure. Reporters are usually people who stick to the facts and they're told not to speculate or imagine. But my sense is that some people in the newsroom at that time knew where things could go. Martin Weil was the duty editor for the Washington Post the night of the botched break-in. Something he heard scanning police radio caught his attention. Doors are open at the Watergate. Later in the day, he approached the news desk. Well, anything going on today? And they said, wow, there really is. They were filled with excitement. It was electric. Everyone was given some assignment who was there. And mine was to telephone various dignitaries affiliated with the Republican Party, because this was a break-in. No one said that the break-in was prompted or caused by the Republicans, but it's the rivalry. Though Weil wasn't the main reporter covering Watergate, he remembers how Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, the lead reporters in the Post's investigation, worked day and night on the story. I think the Washington Post was way ahead in the opening days, but the stories were so good that led uh, editors at these other media organizations to decide that they need a piece of it. Weil finds similarities with the current Russia investigation after a new DNC break, this time via internal cyber attacks, and the reaction from Donald Trump towards the media. Part of the reason that Watergate left a legacy, and part of the legacy is suspicion of government and an adversarial position toward government. I'm not going to say it's hostility, but certainly a suspicion and a feeling in if the president has sometimes said, perhaps without thinking it clearly, that the media might be the enemy. It's not inconceivable that some people elsewhere in government or in the media might see the White House as an as an enemy, but I certainly don't take that position. I don't think many people here do. Weil says he and his colleagues were conducting their journalistic responsibility uncovering the Watergate scandal. 45 years later, Weil is still with the Washington Post carrying out that responsibility. Rafael Sakov and Mikhail Maisuradze, Voice of America, Washington.